Good morning, Williston. Welcome to our students and faculty who are watching this ceremony from advisory groups. Welcome to those students we honor and their families here in the chapel today on this beautiful, snowy, wintry day. And a special welcome to our featured speaker and alum, Tolu Anafawakan, for trekking in on a dog sled to be here in person. I'm an optimist, and so being in person for this ceremony, even as a de-densified and small group, represents a step forward from last year when our speaker also had to be remote. But we will be back together on Monday, and so thank you everyone for coping with the changes of this week. Mrs. Hill and I apologize for not being able to host our annual event following this ceremony, but I promise we're going to try to make that up to you and get you over to the house. So students, since March of 2020, now three academic calendar years ago, our lives were turned upside down by the arrival of a new coronavirus. For the first time in 100 years in the United States, we have been in the thrall of a dangerous virus, and you teenagers, resilient, strong, idealistic, and informed as you are, you have lived and had your educational journeys altered. Not in my lifetime, and so I believe in the lifetime of anyone here today, has education, schooling, at every grade level and at every corner of our country been so affected. We have learned a new vocabulary of medical and scientific terms, antibodies, antigen, viral load, mRNA, N95, KN95, PCR testing. You know all of these. And if you really get into this stuff and listen to the podcast TWIV, T-W-I-V, for This Week in Virology, like I do, you'll see how cool it really is and how fascinating this subject can be. When I think of all these seniors before me and all you've accomplished in your academic careers against the backdrop of the great social upheaval in generations, I am truly in awe of you. In this way, you here symbolize all students watching this ceremony today all Williston students, grades seven through postgraduate. Each of you has had to deal with Zoom classes, masked and separated classes with headsets, changing schedules, the list can go on. You know, sometimes we adults bang our heads because of you teenagers who tend to live more in the moment than we do. It's an age appropriate thing after all. That same conversation you've had with a parent or an advisor or a coach when they say, didn't you think about the consequences of that action and what it might look like tomorrow? That same living in the moment has, I hope, helped shield you a little bit as you've navigated the worst of this pandemic and in, in all the changes and fears it brings. Mrs. Hill and I talk about this all of the time. Teenagers and college kids have taken it on the chin these last two years. Your carefree years have, for some, become careworn. That is not a very uplifting thought for this auspicious ceremony, but as I said, while I'm an optimist, I like to acknowledge the realities around me. Today's inductees have not just weathered the storm, but despite the storm, they have emerged as academic leaders against a supremely talented Williston student body. Williston's chapter of the National Cum Laude Society mirrors Phi Beta Kappa, which is bestowed, on colleges, bestowed by colleges and universities on students throughout the country. We are incredibly proud of your work, the example you set for your classmates and those that follow, and for the unlimited promise that your futures hold. So now it is my pleasure to keep the ceremony going and turn to Mr. Tom Johnson, who is the secretary of our chapter of the Cum Laude Society. Thank you. Good morning. We gather to honor 13 seniors whom we will induct into the Cum Laude Society, the highest academic award that the Williston Northampton School can bestow. In celebrating such academic excellence, we celebrate our fundamental mission to inspire students to live with scholarly purpose, intellectual passion, and personal integrity. The Cum Laude Society is a national honor society modeled on Phi Beta Kappa. Williston Academy joined the Society in 1921. 
The Northampton School for Girls received its charter in 1951, and in 1971, the society granted that merged Williston Northampton School a new charter. All of us here can take inspiration from the three ancient Greek words that form the motto of cum laude. Arete, meaning excellence, dike, meaning justice, and time, meaning honor. Excellence, justice, and honor can characterize the life each of us chooses to lead, and the faculty applaud everyone here and at Williston in general who strives to live a life so inspired. Moreover, we thank your families. We hope that they will enjoy today as a reflection of their influence upon your lives. Please remember to thank all of those people who have helped you to grow your roots and your wings. As we nurture your curiosity and persistence in the search for truth, beauty, and justice, you have taught us much about language and art, about math and science, about history and philosophy and faith, and above all, about a love of learning. Because we live in uncertain times, your effort matters. You remind us that learning remains a fundamentally progressive, optimistic, and democratic enterprise. In you, we witness what can be accomplished by a wonderful mixture of human potential and hard work. And we catch a glimpse of a brighter future. May you embrace the opportunity to improve an ever-changing world. As I call your name, please come forward to receive your membership pin and certificate from the stand before you, and then you may return to your seat. Edward Bergham. Francis Cataldo. <laughs> Rosemary Crooker. Avi Falk. <laughs> Sage Friedman. Si Chen Hua. Jeremy Landman. Sydney Landman. <laughs> Zachary Landon. Sarah Markey. <laughs> C. 
Sofia Michalski. Alan Rodal. <laughs> Natalie Stott. Thank you. Would you please stand, inductees? Your exemplary record in academics and citizenship has earned for you membership in the Cum Laude Society. This society is a fellowship of scholars whose purpose is to recognize excellence in academic work. It is our sincere hope that you will accept the honor of membership as a responsibility to strive for similar excellence in all future endeavors, and along the way, to contribute to finding solutions to some of the major challenges and problems that are facing your generation and our world. On behalf of the faculty, I want to thank you for your consistently strong effort. As you have pursued your goals, you have inspired your classmates and your teachers. By the authority duly granted me as president of cum laude, it is with great pride and pleasure that I welcome you into the Northampton chapter of the cum laude society. Congratulations. And you may be seated. Congratulations, you guys. That's awesome. So uh, now it's a real pleasure to introduce our, our speaker. And in my very first year as head of school at Williston, I got to know this very talented young man who embodied purpose, passion, and integrity before that was even our motto. Timmy Onifawakan was class president, and he did things like join the varsity football team as a senior, having never played the game before. He went on to Harvard, where I'm pretty sure he never touched a football again. I also got to know his mom, who is here today. And Joyce Onifawakan was not just the mother to three graduates, Tosin, class of 22, 2002, Tolu, class of 2005, and Timmy, 2011, but she served on our board of trustees and then acted as surrogate mother to many Nigerian students away from home who came to Williston. So while today's featured speaker, Tolu, class of 205, and I never really overlapped, I certainly feel as if we did. Clearly, her, her hotshot brother learned everything from her, and each of them learned everything from their mom and dad. Tolu went from Williston to Columbia University, where she studied history and American studies, and then to the London School of Economics, where she got a master's degree in public policy and management. Since then, she's worked in communications in what she calls the intersection of culture and cause at places like DKC, Berlin Rosen, and Sunshine Sachs. And now, as a strategic communications officer at the Ford Foundation, Tolu amplifies campaigns for civic engagement and government initiatives, diverse arts, film, and journalism organizations, and place-based policy work. I am so pleased that she is here with us today to be your cum laude speaker, so please give her a warm, de-densified Williston welcome. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, let me begin. Can everyone hear me first? Great. So let me begin this morning by congratulating the students who've been inducted into the Cum Laude Society today. I hope you take the time to truly celebrate this accomplish and the recognition of your work thus far. I would also like to congratulate the friends, family, faculty, and loved ones who I know supported you on this journey and share in your happiness and excitement. While it has been quite some time since I've sat in the classrooms, assemblies, and events that comprise life at Williston, I have very sharp memories of my six years as a student on campus. I think the strongest are from my final year, like yours, when I was 18 and at the precipice of adulthood. I desperately wanted to grow up and get out of Western Massachusetts, but I had secret fears about what it would be like when I eventually left home, went to college, and in my view, started my life. I graduated in 2005. It was a very different year from 2022, but I do think some things remain the same about our experiences and about those of the classes who will follow. You will all be moving up at the end of the semester, whether to a new grade, to a new dorm, or as the seniors are, moving into the next stage of your lives. After the last few decades of being more or less told what to do and how things will be, you'll be making decisions on your own, entirely for yourself, for what may be the first time ever. It's liberating, but it can also be incredibly nerve-wracking. And I would be lying if I told you that there's anyone in this room or listening to this broadcast, students, teachers, and parents alike, who has life 100% figured out. So what I can offer you this morning is a rough guide and a handful of lessons that I've learned on my personal path from Williston to where I stand today. Lessons that I've had to learn on my own and that I've picked up from colleagues, from clients, and friends over the last few decades. I hope that these will resonate with you as you look to the rest of your, your life, the rest of your year, and your life after high school. Firstly, and I cannot stress this enough, and I, I, in some ways I can't even believe I have to say this, but be kind. Life is not a competition. At best, it's a group project, and kindness will take you farther than anything else. People have long memories, and the ones who stand out are the ones who are friendly, the people who don't make work seem like a chore, and recognize that everyone is just trying to make it through the day. Just be nice. It's really not worth behaving otherwise. Alongside kindness, I must also remind you to not be afraid to just have fun. It's easy to get caught up in the rush that is working to get through school, get into college, and then get a job, and forget to prioritize rest and relaxation. My mother used to tell me, my brothers and me that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And my friends from college are always quick to remind me that no one lays on their deathbed wishing they'd just gone to one more meeting. <laughs> Gloria Steinem puts it more eloquently in the popular quote, burnout is a way of telling you that your form of activism was perhaps not very full circle. I'll say it like this. You are young people with many years ahead. Remember to live them. While you're out there living, please also stay curious about the world and about the people around you. Remember that learning can take many forms, a lesson that I was taught at Williston and that I carry with me each day. In my work, we often say that art helps us understand the world around us. And so I personally love to stay curious by engaging with culture and with people. I learned just as much during my classes in high school, college, and graduate school as I did by sitting with my friends and asking questions and having con candid conversations about their lives and their beliefs. And I'm still learning from them, especially as I've seen how they've grown and changed as people over the years. Your world, your community, however you define it, it is important and has a profound impact on you, even if you don't realize it until years later. This idea of self-definition is critical because it's the basis for how you will determine your values and what, what is important to you in life. It's hard not to think about other people's situation and compare your own to theirs. I do not envy your generation because social media and society certainly add additional pressure to keep up with the Joneses. It's essential that you focus on your own path and try to block out the noise. Not everyone's idea of success is the same, and you cannot allow other people's personal milestones to have bearing on your own. The great Audre Lorde said, if I didn't define myself, I would be crunched into other people's fantasies for me and eaten alive. So think about who you would like to be as you move forward. For some, a, a life well lived means going to medical school and becoming a doctor, while for others, it means starting a family or, or having a business. And for everyone, your definitions of success and achievement 
will undoubtedly change as you move through life, find new opportunities, and face different challenges. I want to end with a note about challenges and adversity. It's especially as important as we sit here together and celebrate 50 years of women at Williston. My closest friends at Williston were a group of girls, all of whom were texting me encouragement yesterday ahead of this morning's speech. I find it particularly hard to imagine being a student here and being one of the first women, let alone what the experience was like for the first black woman or first person of any marginalized identity who set foot on this campus. I have so much gratitude for those who preceded my time here and who began to lay the groundwork for a more inclusive Williston. It can be difficult to move through life as an other, but what makes you different is also what makes you absolutely extraordinary. I want you to know that you are powerful, you are valued, and you are forced to be reckoned with. Anyone who makes you feel anything less is an enemy of progress and they're not worth your time. I'm fortunate to descend from a long line of outspoken, some may call them troublesome, women. My grandmother, Caroline Anafawakan, would have turned 100 this year after starting her life in 1922 in what was then a British colony and is today an independent Nigeria. On my father's side of the family, she was the first woman to be educated. She initially went to school in secret before eventually convincing her father that girls deserved an education too. She was a young girl who simply wanted to learn, which she could not foresee were the results of her efforts. Caroline left behind several generations of girls and women who went to school, went to college, and saw the world, every single one of us. She did not know that what she started would continue with me, standing here in front of you, celebrating one of the nation's highest secondary school academic achievements. She was a first, she was certainly an other, and the seed she planted grew into a very proud family tree. I should briefly mention that my other grandmother, Victoria Onabakpea, also lived a very colorful life, but that's a story for another speech on another day. What I take away from Caroline's tale is that making fearless choices and living a life with dignity and purpose can have a ripple effect that goes far into the future and beyond your wildest dreams. Perhaps one of you here today will also return to speak at the Cum Laude Assembly for the class of 2039's honorees. I'm sure you will have even more powerful insights to share than my own. I certainly never imagined this for myself, but I can honestly say that I am proud to be with you all here today, and I am proud of the life that I've built after what Williston thanks in no small part to the support of my family and friends. I know that you all have the tools to grow into the best versions of yourself that you can be. Williston and the communities around you have undoubtedly equipped you for a bright and beautiful future. But remember that life is an iterative process and change is eternal. The person who you are today is laying the groundwork for the person who you will be tomorrow. That applies to everyone, myself included, and not just the students. So look around. Take a second to exist in the present that is today, January 7th, 2022. Take a mental snapshot of this moment. And in 10 years from now, I want you to look back and remember all the ways that your life has changed and all the marvelous things that you've accomplished. And as you do that, I want you to keep in mind all the ways you will continue to grow and all the lessons you will pick up on this thing that we call life. Thank you again for having me here. And thank you to Headmaster Hill for inviting me to speak today. Thank you also to Sarah Phipps, Ann Pickerel, and every member of faculty, staff, and facilities who helped to coordinate today's events. I wish you all the best in the months and years to come, and I cannot wait to see what the class of 2022 does next. Thank you. Goodness, I thought you had to have a whole lot more gray hair in you to give a talk like that. That was absolutely marvelous. And uh, you sort of stole my thunder, Tolu, by mentioning the 50 years of women, which I'm so glad you did, and I'm so glad you shared how it tied directly to your family tree. That, that's just a remarkable story, um, one that I won't forget. Um, I'm reminded on the way over here, I ran into um, Ms. McDowell, and she saw me. She was hustling off to her advisory, shout out Ms. McDowell's advisory, and she said, say hi to Tolu for, for me. She was, she was my advisee. And I said, oh, great. You know, tell me what she did. I was looking for that one last thing to, to work into my uh, introduction. And she goes, I don't remember. She was just awesome. So, Tolu, you're remembered as being awesome by your advisor at, at, uh, at Williston, and no question um, you've carried through on that. So, 
to our, um, to our inductees this morning, you know, this is a really magnificent moment for you. Again, heartfelt congratulations on behalf of the entire faculty for all that you've accomplished, and especially what you've accomplished, as I said at the beginning, against this unbelievable backdrop that you're living through. I know you're going to go on to do great things, and if you have been able to be resilient and strong these last two years, no telling how that's prepared you for the future. Uh, so you make us all proud, as I said. Um, I will certainly remember your opening uh, remarks and to say be kind, I mean I, that resonates deeply. Uh, be kind and I'm going to quote now and I'll quote again that life is a group project. What a great thing. So as we break up here today, I encourage the advisories to uh, stay put for a couple minutes, talk about what you just heard, take, uh, uh, share around the, the circle, you know, what is your favorite line? <laughs> I'm just telling you that mine is life is a group project, but you all who are in your advisories now can go ahead and, uh, and, and argue that one out yourselves. So on behalf of the school, Tolu, thank you so much for coming here. She was 5,000 miles away on Wednesday. Today's Friday. Thank you for that effort. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.